We're not going to glue piece number one, the largest piece. And the reason we're not going to glue it is if we spray it with glue, uh, this edge here is going to have glue on it and it's going to be tacky to the touch. So we're going to put this one aside and we're going to spray all the other pieces and we're going to assemble them in numerical order. As you may be able to see, um, all the pieces have been numbered from uh, 2 to 7 and I'm going to have to shake the glue piece number. I recommend that when you get ready to glue that you move outside. Now I know not everyone has access to a good work area outside, but if you can't work outside, just protect your work surface. I've got some paper underneath and um, we're just going to, you know, we shook up the can and now we're just going to lightly spray. The instructions say that you should hold the can 8 to 10 inches away. You don't need to use much glue. So I'm going to spray pieces 2 through 7. Maybe I'll give a little more glue. And now I'm going to assemble 2, 3, 4, and 5. Notice that I'm lining up the bottom edge here so that it's flush. Then 6. Then piece number 7. I'm going to give a little more spray glue to piece number 7. Oh, you know what? I did that wrong. Piece. Okay, I flipped piece number seven over. That's going to be the bottom of the shoulder pad, and I don't want glue on the bottom surface. I don't want this side to be glued. Um, let me spray piece number two again on the, this reverse side because this is going to get the top. Let's move him down slightly. That. You see, you can you can reposition. This glue is terrific. It allows you to reposition until you get everything right. And then I'm going to place piece number one, the largest plate piece, like this. It's, it does not have glue on it. Center it like that. And then you can just sort of Fold it over, roll it, and you have a shoulder pad. So easy. How long did it take to assemble? About two minutes to, to glue and assemble, and about probably about uh, five minutes to cut. And if you double that, that's about 15 minutes. If you, um, if you practiced, you could probably do it in under 10. The last thing that you want to do is you want to get him out of the room. That was fine. Okay. The last thing that you want to do is you want to give it a little V shape. And this will help you when you go to sew your shoulder pad into your lined jacket. You'll be able to line up the middle of the shoulder pad with the middle um, seam of your jacket. So let's just give it a tiny bit of a snip. Now we're going to snip this end too. And there, doesn't that look cute? You've got your little V. You've got your shoulder pads. Um, I think this is a really easy project and I think it's certainly worth doing. Now, if you'd like to add a chest shield to your shoulder pad, I can show you how to do that. It's very simple. This is a chest shield piece that you would trace onto your template sheet and you'll get a chest piece um, pattern or template. You're going to make it out of punch batting. You would just uh, cut and uh, use your rotary cutter for that. You'll end up with a piece like this. This is really nice. A chest shield fills in the hollow that many women have in this area. And uh, I placed a chest shield in this, in this jacket, which made a very smooth front. 
once you get your shoulder pad made, you're going to place the chest piece or chest shield, let's see, like this. To sew your chest shield, you can either use your uh, machine zigzag stitch, and you're going to have to experiment with the right tension setting, but it's only going to go through one layer of, if you, if you position it properly, it will just need to go through one layer of the felt, or maybe a layer of the felt and one layer of the uh, fusible fleece, and then the layer of the um, punch batting. What you need to do is get this uh, secured to your shoulder pad. The pattern also includes what's known as a sleeve header, and uh, I recommend two tailoring books. The first is Easy Guide to um, Jackets by Cecilia Podlock. It's a threads book, and the second is the um, uh, Jackets for Real People by Palmer Plesh, and they tell you how to use a sleeve header to fill in the um, the area where the uh, sleeve meets the jacket, this area here at the top of the sleeve cap. This is simply the pattern to use, and since it's also made out of punch batting and is right near your shoulder pad, I thought it would be neat to include. Um, this is what the sleeve header looks like out of punch batting. It's nice and soft, and um, we just included that. We also included on this sheet uh, the, the pattern for using tie interfacing to ease in a sleeve. Uh, this is tie, the kind of tie interfacing that is found inside a man's tie. You can buy the ties at a uh, thrift shop or you can raid someone's closet. Uh, look for the kind of interfacing that has a lot of give. Let me pull this and show you how much give this, this has. Can you see it narrowing as I pull? You want a nice thick uh, interfacing with a lot of give. Usually the more expensive men's ties have the good tie interfacing. And this is, um, this is what you would get more or less after you cut your tie interfacing with the pattern piece that we've that we're providing and this is used to ease in a sleeve before you insert it into your jacket well i hope you have enjoyed uh, today's program on making your own shoulder pads i think it's a great project if you're planning to make your own tailored jackets Making your own shoulder pads is a way to guarantee that you get the shoulder line that you want. It's not easy to find these pads in stores, and it's expensive to order them online, plus there's much less of a selection than there used to be. If you make your own pads, you can, um, you can get exactly what you want, and you can save money which you can spend on um, fabric and, or buttons instead of shoulder pads and get a great look. So thanks for watching and be sure to look for the PDF files with the pattern pieces and also the, uh, the brief step-by-step -step instructions. Take